are you? All right, so we're going to start week eight. All right, it's hard to believe, man. We're halfway through the semester. So we're going to do week eight um, on caregiving. And, uh, and you know, basically we have a lot of different pieces of the puzzle as we're assembling the puzzle. You see how everything is all interconnected. And that, I, I believe, is the beauty of this course. Uh, we will be sending out a, a study guide for the upcoming midterm that starts next week. Okay, that'll be next Sunday, a week from today. Alrighty, so we are here. We are. Um, today is Sunday, October 9th, and we come down here to um, bu -bu 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 caregiving. Okay, now if you look, you know, way back in this semester, how we all started. We started with global aging, and we, you know, gave you the 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 issues at hand. Okay. Um, the cost of having an older society, okay? The financial burden, okay? Um, that comes with that oftentimes, okay? Um, there's also a lot of good things that we're gonna be, that we also bring up, okay? In terms of, um, you know, what older people bring to the table in terms of finances, and as long as they've done their financial planning, okay? Um, and, you know, assistance to you, um, your, your parents and grandparents, um, but that being said, um, we, when we looked at other countries, we looked at our country, and we started going over, you know, the reality of biology, and that is that we do have um, significant functional decline, okay? And, um, and then when things really, really um, get bad, okay, and the wheels come off the bus, um, we get age-related diseases. And we talked about cancer, we talked about di di diabetes, and all the diabetes-related conditions, kidney failure, all right, stroke, heart disease, peripheral artery disease, okay, congestive heart failure, on and on and on and on, okay? Um, we also looked at uh, what one of the really sad consequences um, of living long and having these associated diseases, especially diabetes connected to vascular disease, and that was Alzheimer's disease, okay? So all this, you know, does come at a, a bit of a burden if this is, you know, the hand that you're dealt. And so, um, and the burden is really, is gonna be resting on your shoulders. And uh, so you have to kind of prepare yourself, wrap your, your head around uh, what's gonna be coming your way, okay? And this is caregiving right here. So we're gonna go launch right into this. Again, my lecture's going right here. Um, this is a, a kind of a neat graphic, and it just kind of, you know, is supposed to illustrate um, the mom caring for the child and then the child caring for the mom, okay? And uh, it is, you know, the circle of life. It's um, uh, kind of colloquial, but it is what it is, okay? And so it's one of my favorite graphics when we put it in there, okay? All righty. So um, this is a publication that was done in 2010 and projects further out there by AARP. And, uh, and I'm going to refer to um, uh, newer uh, publications within their website and an infographic that they've produced just in the last year that, that kind of validates some of the modeling that they did here in 2010. Okay. And, um, you know, in, in, in this study, you have, just like w way back when, when we defined gener generations and we decided, you know, people born from this period of time to this period of time were baby boomers, some were Gen Xers, some were Gen, Gen Z, like you guys, et cetera, okay, millennials. Um, they also, in terms of looking at this, this issue of caregiving, they looked at the people most likely to need caregiving, okay? That was, that was uh, the number of people that are 80 years and older, okay? And then they also calculated the people that are most likely to be delivering the care. And, um, you know, obviously there's, there's a huge spread in this, but, but that age group is uh, 45 to 64, okay? And this is something that uh, Julie and I have had to deal with hands-on, so they're pretty spot on in terms of what's going on, in terms of caring for our parents, okay? All righty, so uh, the, the dynamic is we have a lot of older people. People um, are living longer because of all the, the, the advances that have been made in hygiene, nutrition, and uh, in kind of intervention-based medicine. Now, we took a blip, took a hit, all right? Um, during COVID, all right, in terms of <laughs> older people were dying a lot more than younger people, all right, but the projection is still the projection that there's going to be a lot of older people, and we learned from this class that um, 
that because it's so difficult to be competitive in, uh, you know, you know these, you know, if we were to call them westernized, okay, or developed countries, um, people are delaying reproduction or not even having kids, okay. So what does that, what does, how does that play out then in terms of um, dealing with um, uh, an older person and um, and the care that they're going to need, okay. So. Um, in 2010, okay, the support ratio, okay, of family members that was out there, this would be the care, the person that needs the care, the 80-year-old person, and you know their children and possibly their grandchildren. Okay, so that ratio was about seven potential care caregivers for every person that was at high risk. This 80-plus group. Again, the definition of this um, seven group it was 45 to 64. Okay, alrighty, so. By 2030, um, this ratio is going to go four to one. So that just tells you that there's fewer people to give the same amount of care. So there's going to be a, a big increase in burden. And this is, you know, for you guys, when you are in the wheelhouse of dealing with your parents and grandparents, the ratio is going to be even less. Okay, so three to one. It just, just means there's a lot, lot, lot um, more uh, kind of time burden and financial burden that's going to be uh, something that you're going to have to deal with, okay? All right, so this right here is the actual um, report, okay? And we'll go right into it. And it just, it's really some def definition, and we're going, to, we're going to jump to the graphics. I just kind of, again, as always, you read through this report, and then um, what you do is you uh, um, open up your, your quiz at the same time, and uh and, and you find the answer to the question. So this is everything that I was just going over, okay? And they do, they do some, uh, some, some definition here. Uh, you know what, what I should do is, so let's go like this, because I'm kind of lame with my little hand here, and I'll go like that, okay, better, okay? So, um, so they're, they're talking about the demand for long-term services and support, okay? And they're gonna you know, um, define that later in terms of, you know, what kind of help do I need? You know, do I need help in terms of being driven to places? Do I need help in terms of paying my bills? Do I need help bathing? You know, all, you know it, there, there's a huge range, okay? So these are these long-term services and support, okay? And uh, again, they, they go through the definition, okay? They're looking at the, the fact that people 80 years of age or older need a lot more, and the most likely person um, to do it is the people 45 to 64, okay? So... Alrighty, um, so this is, you know, um, uh, the backbone of care for older people are family members, okay, that would be you, all right? Yes, there are uh, assisted living facilities, there are uh, nursing home facilities, um, they come at a price, you know, and can you afford that? We're going to get to that later. Can you handle the, you know, a range of six to $10,000 a month? that's not paid by insurance, okay? And uh, so it's completely out of pocket. So that, you know, that's a big issue. So most people can't, so then they rely on their own uh, resourcefulness, okay? Alrighty, um, we see here, we're looking at uh, the disability, okay? That requires care, care okay? We see that um, two thirds um, of Americans that are in that um, 80 or above um, category have significant disability, okay? And um, and this is an issue that, you know, collides with the fact that there are, again, fewer people out there to help these people that are disabled, okay? So fewer family members are available, okay? Um, and uh, the more frail the older person is, okay? Uh, they may even need institutional care. And like I said, this comes at great personal cost that we'll show you when we go back to the actual uh, blackboard part of the course, okay? Um, and uh, so when we look at, you know, the kind of chores that, you know, that you have to do, okay? Um, these are household chores, you know, stuff I was talking about, but it can also include, you know, you become a, um, a kind of an in-home doctor nurse in terms of, you know, dealing with stuff like wound care, uh, injections, you know, let's say your your um, your parent is diabetic and they need um, insulin injections. Um, let's say they have uh, some type of um, problem in terms of production of red blood cells or white blood cells, platelets. So they're going to need injections for that. It's going to be have to be timed. Somebody has to manage their medicine. 
Now, these are, this, this thing is is an enormous task. Okay, um, and um, you know, uh, like I said, health, you know, this, this healthcare in terms of these are the needs of the older uh, person. Okay, the long term uh, service and support. Okay, um, is you know shifting because of the cost to home based care. Okay, and the burden is on the family family caregivers. It's it's can become more and more enormous, and that's what this is about over here, okay? All right, so this is more right here of the documented percent changes in um, in uh, people that are able to do the care versus people that are, that are in need of the care. 70% um, of people over the age of 80 are gonna need some form of care, okay? Um, and uh, when you um, and then you and you look at um, you know the numbers, okay? Um, when we look at uh, one in five people age 45 to 54 are the caregivers, okay? Um, and this is a shrinking pool, and that's what that's all about, right there, okay? All right. Now, one thing they talk about when you when you get into care, and you'll be asked about this in terms of when you're signing. Let's say you had to sign up a home health aid or uh, put your you know, loved one into a uh, assisted living facility, a nursing facility, you're gonna know um, just the basic activities of daily living. What do they need help with, okay? Do they need help with bathing, dressing, using the toilet, okay? Instrumental activities, okay? So these are more, you know, hands-on activities. And then these are things that you can do distant, okay? So um, my, my wife, Julia, your co-instructor is handling a lot of these distant activities. Um, so um, telephone, paying bills, okay, preparing meals. And then um, there's a whole other segment that's not mentioned in this article, but um, but when you're dealing with um, healthcare, okay, you need, you need um, a healthcare advocate that's gonna get in there and make sure the health insurance is covering what it is supposed to cover. Um, and you're dealing with the costs, and so it really it, it requires a lot, a lot of work. Okay, alrighty. So that's what that's all about right here. So again, they go over again um, the projections. Okay, going from uh, from from these days to these days to these days, and I just you know I want to kind of summarize what you see right here. We can see <clears throat> that the number of people that are in that 45 to uh, 54 um, uh, age group. That um, that are uh, that are 45. Sorry, the 64 age group that are going to be taking care of the 80 year olds. You see that again. The number of people are going down, 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 down. And we project out here to 2050, where it's going to be three to one instead of where it was at seven to one in 2010. Okay. Okay. Um, we've already seen this. Okay. You know why? Why is this happening in part? Okay. Less fertility coupled with a growing um, older American population right here, all right? And um, anyway, so uh, so read through this, okay? Um, uh, you see that this age group that they earmarked in this analysis shows um, almost exponential growth, okay? So we see this continued growth of people that are in this most vulnerable age group that need the care at 80 years of age and above, okay? And, and then the projection here that what's about what's gonna happen in, um, in the future, in 2050, and you know that's a, that's a nice number to look at. So this is then summarized again down here, you know, um, in terms of you know the um, the caregiver support ratio, okay, and they kind of do it by epic when the boomers turn 55, when the boomers turn 65. I'm a boomer, okay, and then when the boomers turn 80, okay, and you see again that's that same graphic that we saw uh, in in the paper in the previous paper, but it's um, but it's made uh, a little more, more kind of color uh, uh, graphical, so it kind of gives you a little bit more of a highlight. And, and here's the numbers again, going from seven to four to three to one in terms of caregiving ratio, okay? All righty, so, you know, what are we gonna do? You know, how do, how do we handle this? This is yeah, part of your discussion. This is part of your 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 conversation you be should you should be having you know we have midterm elections coming up you know nobody's talking about this okay but maybe they should you know um there's talks about cuts in medicare talks about cuts in social security you know we have a growing aging population what about um pro pro providing some type of um you know tax help okay an incentive for you to be the caregiver 
All right. So anyways, we look right here. Um, we'll look at long-term care expenditures. So this is how much the government is putting out, okay, both for both health, okay, so this be hands-on, a lot of, a lot of the um, medical needs that an older person has, and then the social components that I did when we looked at the activities of daily living. And so how, how much is the government investing, okay, um, in terms of these long-term care expenses, expense, expenses okay, um, as a share of the gross domestic product, okay? All right, so this is, you know, if you look at um, the wealth of the country and their output, and then they take their tax revenues, and they say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to give, you know, this is a return. We're going to give you some return from the, the money that you put in your taxes, and we're going um, to dedicate it to long-term care, all right? So we have long-term care, health and social, and we see um, the Danish countries, so the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, they, they're world leaders in this, okay? They, um, they are visionary with respect to this. They have a unique tax base, too, that helps accommodate them, okay? Um, we see France, Japan. Um, this is a large collective of countries. And you see way, way, way down here, here's the United States, okay? So, you know, we are putting out, you know, uh, base, basically um, almost one-eighth of what these other countries are doing in terms of long-term care. So if the government's not going to do it, then it, then it financially falls on your shoulders, okay? Um, we see this as well here. You know, how do we stack up? Here's another type of caregiving. And how do these countries stack up in terms of exposures and your know, annual public spending, okay? And this is put out here um, um, yeah, in actual numeric form here. And again, we're way, this is for, for uh, child care, another form of caregiving, and we're way, 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 way down here at the bottom, okay? Um, again, we're, we're basically on our own, okay? So how do we stack up? What do you think, okay? You can see that we're at the lowest end for long-term care, okay? Um, we don't even register for long-term care social, okay? And you can see again with the U.S. government, we're at the bottom of the list for globally for child care support another form of caregiving okay so you have to consider what does this mean for you and your family it means you're on your own financially and in terms of time in terms of caring for both your children and for adult caregiving okay all righty we look at the composite okay the typical caregiving situation in our country for the for an older person and um you know, so, so we could aggregate it as 80 plus, but it could be, you know, uh, 65 plus, you know, it, it is what it is, okay? And um, we see that most of Amer older Americans receive care in their own homes right here. A lot of people get long-term care insurance so that if they become disabled, okay, they, um, they can then um, access that insurance that there's nothing but firewalls for accessing that insurance. It's a really difficult situation. It's easier if you're in a nursing home. It's almost impossible when you're at your own home, okay? And this is what everybody wants to do, okay? So we can see, you know, the, the layout here. This is your, the, the typical um, caregiving that's going to happen for somebody that's older 80. It's going to happen. Um, 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 they want to have it be done in, in their own home, okay? Now, and we look at caregivers, okay, uh, this would be you, okay, and it could be family, I'm going back here, it could be a senior community, okay, um, um, but we see right over here, um, when we look at uh, uh, most caregivers that provide care outside their own homes, okay, the caregiver is, um, and, and the person needing care, 44% are living in that house, so that means the majority of the time, um, this person is going to be living with you, OK, and you're going to be dealing with that in terms of your sociality, in terms of your own mental health. OK, but you can see how it all lays out that the majority is the person is living in their own house or they're living with you. And that's what you should be projecting. OK, um, let's say you, you want to go this direction over here. OK, uh, a nursing home facility or some type of assisted living facility. Let's see how that plays out um, for the cost, okay? So this was uh, uh, ongoing cost from uh, about 2020 here. Uh, we look at the average monthly, monthly cost for living in a nursing home facility. So this is somebody that needs a lot of different activities of daily living um, in terms of their care, you know, bathing and feeding and all this kind of stuff. And uh, um, we see that, you know, you're looking at six to $8,000 a month, a month, okay? Your insurance does not cover this, okay? Um, 
their insurance is not covered. This is completely out of pocket, right? So you you need in order to be able to do this, you need to have the assets, you need to have the financial well-being. If you don't, then that person's at home with you, or or you're visiting them in their home, which is a really difficult situation too. You know, when I'm you know here I am living in Laguna Gale. My um my mom was living in Monterey Park, and uh, and then moved in with my brother and Brea. It was it was still the same situation. It was like this massive triangle of 80 miles, 80 miles, and 80 miles. I'd go to work at USC, I'd go see my mom in Monterey Park, and then I'd come home. And it was just you know it's it is draining. Believe me. Um, I have a friend that just um that whose dad has early Alzheimer's. The memory care unit he was looking at was ten thousand dollars a month. Okay. That's on the cheap side. So um, this is this is a big deal, okay? Um, if you live in an assisted living facility, so this is where you're still pretty good, but you just don't want to have to deal with uh, you know managing your house and everything. So you're looking at three to four to five thousand dollars a month in an, an assisted living facility. It's like an apartment, uh, um, but you know, but different in that there are some services made available to you, okay? And then if you had a, a home health aid that would come two hours a day, okay. This could be uh, two hours a day, okay? This could be about um, uh, $2,000 a month or more, okay? All right, so how does it play out in terms of um, um, what uh, your out-of-pocket is, okay? So so um, Medicare, okay, the insurance that your parents or grandparents would have, okay, um, if they're over 65 years of age, does not pay for assisted living facility costs, period. So this is completely out-of-pocket, so you need to have assets. You need to sell your house, need to have um, money in a retirement account that you could liquidate, but they got to have money, okay? Uh, for a skilled nursing facility, okay, so this is intense, okay? A lot more care, okay? You qualify for this uh, um, once you've completed a, a three-day inpatient stay in the hospital. So this is where you're pretty messed up, okay? And you're in the hospital, okay? Um, and then for the first 20 days, they put you into a nursing facility, skilled nursing facility, um, it is covered by Medicare, okay? And then days 21 to 100, uh, then you have to pay, okay, uh, with coinsurance, okay, $185 a month, okay? And beyond 101 days, okay, so that's what, you know, a little over three months, uh, all costs are on you, okay? So this is a big, big deal, okay? We can look at home health aid right here, okay? Physical therapy, occupational therapy. Medicare does not pay for these services, period, okay? Home health uh, assistance is out of pocket. 24-hour-a-day uh, care at home could be enormous. Person next door costs them thousands of dollars a day when they're at the end of their life. So um, you um, meals delivered at your home not covered by uh, Medicare insurance that your grandparents or parents may have when they're over 65. Okay, homemaker services not covered. Okay, shopping, cleaning, laundry, custodial services not covered. Okay, so these are all things you have to think about. All right. So when, if you, and when you find yourselves in this situation, um, you'll feel lost. Okay, even myself and Julia, you know, where we're educating in it in it you feel lost you know you you do who do i turn to okay and that's kind of the basis of um the discussion uh for week eight and that there is a social services component of society okay uh, we have a great um school of social work at usc and um social works social workers are are saints you know um they don't get paid a whole lot okay um, they they manage your case, okay? They don't do the hands-on work, but they know the people. They have the connections to direct you to the people that are going to be the most cost-efficient and provide the services that you need, okay? And that's what this is all about. So go. this is a short article right here, the PDF file. This is the website. Um, you have to be culturally aware, okay? The services that a person that, that living in Almonte needs versus the services a person in Irvine need Irvine needs are completely different. So you have, so you need to have somebody who's in tune with the culture of the society that your parent or grandparent comes from. Okay, um, and this is you know an issue not only for home health aids. Okay, you got to hire the right kind of people, 
but also um, if you go back and you're, you're let's say you're, you you have enough assets to choose an assisted living facility, you have enough assets to, still, to choose a skilled nursing facility, you know, your parent or grandparent is not going to be on board if these people are culturally inept, okay? So um, so this is really, really important aspect. I know, you know, we, we, we've talked a lot about being inclusive at USC uh, recently, but this actually has some teeth to it. This is, this is you know, a really meaningful part um, of this segment of, of uh, care for older people, okay? Um, so uh, there's a couple of videos here, they're short, and this is, uh, again, the superheroes um, that, that care, caregivers are. And if we look at the, you know, um, a day in the life, um, they don't make a huge amount of money, they can though. You know, it just all depends on your caseload. If you if you then form a small company where you have multiple social workers working under you, then um, you know th th uh, this can be a, a real career track. Okay, so again, what are you doing? You're always referring your client. Okay, this could be me to the correct treatment centers. Okay, so the so that the older person gets the care that they need. Okay, the social worker is continually making sure that they have training. So they're up to date in terms of the information they're giving to you. Um, you have to have a strong desire to help people that are in need. And that's what this is all about. And then here, this is where all your training comes in, okay? Where you, you have this ability to assess the client's needs and, um, and pr pr provide a set of real goals to help them out, okay? Um, now we're talking about social workers here, you know, working with um, either the older population or working with caregivers for the older population, like me, okay, like Julia, um, and then the other, this, the other types of um, um, employment that social workers have is is broad based, okay. Um, sixty percent of social workers are, um, uh, sixty percent, sorry, of mental health professionals are trained as social workers. It could be their primary degree, or they can have multiple degrees. Okay, social workers work in schools to help out children in need. Um, we, there are lots and lots of different government-based family service agencies. There's government agencies that oversee everything. Um, you can go into private practice. Yeah, you, you, um, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, with, familiar with Dodderville Hall and um, um, the, the, the gift that named out came from a, a person that was super successful in this realm in terms of private practice, okay? Every hospital, every mental health facility has a team of social workers, okay? Community centers, and yes, prisons, okay? Correctional institutions, all right? Child protective services. These are all different um, arenas for you. So you, you, you go through all this, okay? Um, you read this information, okay? And, and then I want you to think about it, okay? I want you to think seriously about your family. Um, are your parents living alone? Do you expect them? to do so until they die, okay? What about the culture of the family collective, all right? Um, are you going to be the caregiver? So we've talked about this, the family collective, what is that, okay? Multi-gen housing, okay? Is it gonna include this caregiving component, okay? So this is all something that you, you can talk about, okay? All right, guys, um, good luck with your week, and uh, we'll be sending out the, um, the uh, uh, study guide real soon, all right? Isn't that a great, great photo, okay? All right, and uh, I forgot to close the, the, uh, the, um, the, the video for this time, and we'll see you guys next week.